Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's SimScale webinar on four physics in 30 minutes, which really is um, a catchy title for a product demonstration in which we're going to take a look at two things. Um, first, how cloud native simulation makes it easy to deploy simulation to more engineers and designers than, you know, typically doable, doable with a desktop solution. And B, um, how a cloud native simulation tool allows each of those engineers and designers to simulate more intensely, faster, across more physics, and thereby ultimately allow the organization to innovate faster. Um, we're going to demonstrate this, or I'm going to demonstrate this using this um, electric motor uh, model here on the right. It's a great example because it involves many different physics, and so we're going to do some simulation work together in a minute. Before we, uh, before we go there, I want to quickly introduce SimScale as well um, for the uh, people in the audience that are not familiar uh, with our organization yet. So we're headquartered in Munich, Germany, where I'm located right now. And for the past 10 years, we've been fortunate enough to work with hundreds of thousands of users, thousands of engineering organizations, um, you know, running millions of simulations in, in production, and ultimately help them to innovate faster by using simulation earlier, broader, more intensely in a design process. And that is really at the core um, of what SimScale is about. So we consider our mission to empower every engineer to innovate faster by making simulation truly accessible. And um, that, of course, you know, um, is a sort of, is, you know, easier said than done, uh, but it's really at the core of what uh, SimScale is about. And you're going to see me talking or going back to this notion of making simulation more accessible at any scale and how it um, allows to innovate faster throughout the rest of this demonstration today. Um, before we now start, this is the last slide before we actually do some simulation work together, I promise. Um, and before we go there, I want to make sure that um, I set up the you know the product demonstration that we're going to see together in a in a proper way in a second. Um, it's important from my point of view because we've all seen you know simulation results. We've all seen different simulation softwares. You know many of you in the audience probably have used different types of simulation tools. And so um, you know the colorful pictures and uh, you know mesh generation and you know result exploration etc. None of this is new. Um, what's new about um, about SimScale and sort of the novel aspect that SimScale introduces is how easy SimScale, uh, like it, it becomes to deploy simulation earlier, broader, more intensely in a, in a design process with a cloud native simulation tool. And so that's why I think it's important to quickly sort of highlight the differences between a traditional CAE or simulation setup and a cloud native simulation tool such as SimScale. Um, before we go into the actual simulation work. The first main difference is um, the level of accessibility. Typical in a, in a you know traditional simulation deploy, it's typically deployed to a specific um, you know, engineer or a group of engineers that has access to high performance computing hardware at, at times, you know, made accessible via VPN logins, et cetera. So it's fairly cumbersome um, to, to get access to these types of tools while um, a cloud native application allows access from anywhere just via an internet enabled device, simply via a browser. Um, the next thing is the oftentimes um, when we when we see how engineering organizations have deployed their simulation tools, it's either um, you know either a lot of uh, engineers do not have any. Uh, access to simulation, then there might be some designers that might have CAD integrated tools, um, but those then are disconnected from the tools that the actual simulation engineers use. And so we have a disconnected tool landscape, a disconnected um, use of simulation, um, and yeah, no, no real integration uh, between them. We believe that it's important that the entire organization works on one platform um, that integrates all types of physics or many different types of analysis types um, that then also allows to effectively collaborate with each other, which is the next aspect here. Um, we believe that good simulation happens, uh, good or good use of simulation happens when 
application knowledge about you know the product that's that's being designed as well as simulation knowledge comes together um which is why we believe it's uh, collaboration is key to making this happen um so instead of having you know simulation engineers disconnected from from product design and the simulation tools disconnected from the actual design work um we believe it's key that all of those stakeholders um, can effectively collaborate uh, with each other, sharing best practices, um, you know, quickly running new iterations. The simulation engineer might provide a method, the designer or engineer might consume that method, but run simulations um, themselves. Um, so that's why we believe to effect effective use of simulation requires um, collaboration at the center. A, it's you know, this is almost table stakes if a an, if an engineer or a designer doesn't use simulation on a daily basis, might have just a need, you know, every other week or once a month, this person will not adopt a simulation tool unless it's easy to learn, easy to use, which is, yeah, what, what we believe this is key, right? Which a lot of the traditional simulation software has been built only with the expert in mind. Um, while, you know, we're going to see it in a second, we believe that, um, a cloud native application makes it also easier to build, um, to make it easy to learn, easy to use for novice uh, users as well. Lastly, um, the the moment one starts uh, using simulation and you know you get a first insight into how design performs, um, more often than not, you want to run additional um, studies. You want to explore different designs. You might want to run a parametric sweep for you know a specific uh, a product parameter that's of interest. More often than not, in a traditional setup, this isn't possible because either the licensing situation doesn't allow for it, you do not have the required hardware that you need, um, yeah, and, and, the, and the likes in a cloud native uh, platform, these barriers vanish because all hardware is commissioned um, you know, from the cloud, so you always have the resources available that you need. And a cloud native licensing model has parallel execution in mind, right, without breaking the bank. So this is a you know almost like a long laundry list of aspects that we believe are different when you um, when you compare a traditional CAE setup to um, a cloud native application such as SimSkill, and so I'm I'm listing them here because as we now go through the next you know 20 minutes or so uh, through the simulation work, I'm gonna come back to these aspects and hopefully show um, you know what specifically we mean with um, with those with those differentiators. Now, enough of that. Let's do some real simulation work together. Uh, as I said, we're going to use this electric motor uh, model as an example. Um, great example because, you know, the, there's multiple different physics involved, multiple different engineering challenges um, in a single model. It starts with, I need to, this is a, um, a version that needs to be water cooled. So there's so much heat um, that needs to be dissipated that a convective cooling or sort of a, you know, an air cooled approach um, is not viable anymore. And so I need to, in order to drive the coolant through this, um, I need to dimension a pump, right? So I'm interested in the pressure drop of that water jacket. Um, so that's one design aspect. Another one, then logically, once I have water or a coolant flowing uh, through this, is the heat dissipation um, effective enough to keep the electric motor in a you know in a temperature regime where it can operate safely? So that's the thermal management aspect. Of course, there's a um, my my shaft and my rotor rotate, and so I need to make sure that the natural or eigenfrequencies of those rotating parts are you know, do not overlap with a frequency that might be excited by the the rotation of the motor. So vibration is key. And la last but not least, of course, um, the uh, static stress um, by uh, that, that that's acting on the shaft um, is another design consideration. So many different, you know, structural, thermal, flow aspects that we can take a look uh, together. To manage expectations, we'll not be able to run all of these simulations end to end, um, but we're going to start at least with the pressure drop. I'm going to show you the entire workflow, and then afterwards, I'm going to um, show you know it's like previews, or you're going to see that all of the the simulation setups are somewhat similar, and so we're going to take a look at the other uh, simulations as well, just not end to end, just to manage expectations. Good. Now enough of the slides. We'll hop over to this model. Uh, we can see here this is the um, electric motor model in my um, in my CAD system. In this case, we're using a cloud-native CAD system uh, on shape, but 
Uh, SimSkill is cat agnostic, so we have customers using any CAD system imaginable. It could be desktop, could be cloud, uh, doesn't matter. Um, and so what we're going to what we want to do first is start with a simple analysis. We're going to take a look at the pressure drop of that water jacket. For that, I'm going to isolate um, the the channel here. Um, I could do that also within SimScale. In this case, I want to keep it simple, so I'll do it inside of Onshape. So I have the water channel, and now thinking about accessibility. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to start from you know a simple browser, nothing prepared. I'm going to type up in my window simulation.new, and that's a domain we once bought um, that brings me directly to the project creation dialog. Um, I'm creating a new simulation project inside SimSkill. And it asks me directly what geometry I would like to um, simulate. I could now upload a model from my local CAD system. In this case, we're using Onshape, so I can use the direct connector. Um, and we're going to import get. I have now the water channel imported. I'm going to go ahead, create a simulation. You can see going back to one platform, all physics, or one login, all physics. I have access to all different analysis types um, that are available in SimSkill. I'm choosing the appropriate one for this model. Um, and you can see the green checks mean I have nothing to do anymore. The red uh, bullets here on the left mean I have something to do. Let's give it a proper name first. Pressure drop. I am um, assigning a material, in this case, water. I'm bringing in boundary conditions over here. In this case, I'm going to drive it via a volumetric flow rate. Um, and that is, now I need to check, that is 5 liters per minute, or uh, calculated in cubic meter per second, it's that. I'm assigning a pressure outlet on the other side. And lastly, what I do want to take a look at is what I'm actually interested in is the pressure difference, right? the pressure drop across this. And so I'm assigning directly a result control item, which will give me not just a call of a picture, but also directly the quantitative pressure drop that I'm actually interested in. That was it. So I'm kicking things off. Now, quick recap. We started, what, three, four minutes ago with a cat model. And without you know anything installed, nothing you know, nothing locally, just via a browser, I have a first CFD analysis of a pressure drop underway. Um, you know, so four minutes going back to easily accessible, just a browser, no installations, no specific hardware, no VPNs. That's what we mean with accessibility. And so on the on the points made before. Now, another aspect we talked about was scalability. We talked about the fact that we are. Um, that um, scaling up simulation use um, is something that's you know typically not easy to do in, a, in a, with traditional CAE. With a cloud native application, that's easily achieved. So what we can do is we might be interested in actually looking at multiple different flow rates for this channel. So I can go back to our inlet condition and actually parameterize it. So instead of just running one value, I'm running multiple ones. And um, So here's the CSV. I'm uploading it. And can run a full study. Now, the CSV contained um, from 5 liters per minute all the way up to 40 liters per minute. And you can see that I start with one click. It starts a parametric sweep um, running simulations for all of those different values. That's what we mean with scalability, that it easily scales, you know, like to, um, uh, in terms of model complexity, so I can run large me meshes, large simulations, but also in terms of simultaneous or parallel execution of many different runs. Um, and again, allowing me to innovate faster because I'm generating more design insights early in the process, early in the design process. Good. Um, we're going to take a look uh, in a second at the, um, at the last 
uh, result here, but uh, at the first simulation result here. But I do want to make um, sure that we also touch on collaboration. Um, if I would have a colleague that I would now, you know, like to share this with, or sort of ask for either simulation advice or let him know about specific results I have generated, I can at any point in time share this project with a colleague of mine. And so again, as you, you know, as you are used to from other browser-based applications. Um, you can simply invite others, give them viewing rights, give them editing rights, allow them to real time collaborate with you depending on the use case. And the same is also possible with our support. So you can also in real time enable SimScale support to jump into your project and help you um, with your simulations. Again, away from ticket systems waiting for days to weeks towards real time collaboration with either the SimScale support or your colleagues within your organization. Good. Our first results are done. And so let's take a first look at this. Again, I will keep this quick because it's not about a training here. Um, so this is the velocity field. Let's take a look at the pressure field and what I would expect, right? I have high pressure at the inlet, low pressure at the outlet. Um, all the usual elements can be done now. I can, you know, pro points here. We're looking at what? Eight kilopascals in pressure drop roughly. Um, you, you get the idea, right? We could now visualize uh, streamlines or velocity fields, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, but again, I think the, the key aspect here is not that, you know, you could have generated these simulation results with another uh, tool as well. The novel or unique aspect is that we've done all of this within a matter of, you know, minutes, um, completely without any local hardware, without any local software, and with the ability to invite, um, to invite uh, colleagues as we see fit. Now, um, one more step. Um, our, our experiment is done as well, but, and we're going to take a look at this in a second. But before we do that, I quickly jump back to my CAT model because I want to prepare us for the next simulation. In this case, we're going to bring back those parts. Um, and next up, I want to set up a, a thermal analysis. And so for that, we just going to isolate the um, non-rotating parts. So we're going to delete those. Um, and now the interesting part here will be, we're going to make a small design change. So you're going to see it in a second. What I just did is I um, changed the helix. So I'm going to go back to, my, to SimScale. Um, let's give this a proper name. This was my pressure or flow channel. Now we're going to import. Uh, I think I still have it open. Um, so we're going to import this again, the latest version. And while this imports, let's take a look at the experiment we ran. So um, if you recall, this was the, the study just by with one simulation. And then we ran an experiment of a parametric sweep. We don't want to look at all of these results uh, separately. What we're actually interested in is how the pressure drop uh, changes with respect to the flow rate. At the bottom, you can see the flow rate going up from five liters per minute all the way to 40 liters per minute. And I can see how the pressure drop across my, uh, across my flow channel actually behaves. Right. And also here, um, again, this is not a webinar uh, about uh, e-motor design, but more about how, do you, how, how cloud native simulation can support this. So depending on what design constraints or um, yeah, constraints I have in my design project, in my current development project, I could now make informed decisions what would be a viable um, flow rate or what you know, pressure drop um, you know, what the pressure drop brings in terms of requirements for the pump. So all of these things can be done quickly, simply um, via via browser. Good. Now, next up, um, I have the new version implemented, uh, imported, and we can now set up a thermal analysis um, with that model. So we're going to start again as we did the last time. Um, just in this case, we're choosing a conjugate heat transfer analysis, coupling convection, conduction, and radiation. Same story we are assigning the coolant, in this case water. The housing is out of, made out of aluminum. The middle part is standard steel. And in the 
windings are out of copper. Um, they are already grouped, so we can use this part group to assign it quickly. Lastly, some materials are assigned, um, as we've already seen earlier. Same story around boundary condition. I'm driving the coolant via a volumetric um, flow rate. It's over here, you know, coming in at 20 degrees Celsius. Outlet over here. And I could also now go ahead and so, you know, and at the outside assign um, uh, convection boundary conditions for the surrounding air. In this case, we're just going to assume them as adiabatic. For the sake of this demo, that's fine. And then lastly, I need to assign the power source, of course. In this case, 150 watts per winding. Good. I think we are missing. You can see contacts are automatically identified. We want to assign gravity as well, minus 9.81. And that should be it to start the simulation. Yes, so we can start the simulation right away. Now, um, before, like, I want to show you one last aspect around the simulation setup. Then we're going to take a look at some of some of the results, keeping um, the shortage of time in mind. What I do want to show is how easy it is to now make a design change. We do know that the, we had four sort of rotations in the helix here. Right. So let's go back to our CAT model. And instead of four passes of the fluid, let's say we want to see how it works with six. So I'm changing this in my parametric model. And you can see six, um, six of them. So let's go back to SimScale and import a new version. Let's quickly give this a better name than four passes. And let's bring in the latest version. Now we have the latest version imported. Let's give it a proper name as well. Standard six passes. And again, just to verify, here's the six passes right, um, of the water channel. And now I can go ahead and say this was my thermal analysis, four passes. And so I'll duplicate this one give it a proper name as well, thermal, path, uh, thermal six passes. And now um, we will see that all imports into SimScale are associative. So I assigned a new geometry. And you can see that all assignments here on the left will stay the same. So I can see all my uh, my boundary conditions are my boundary conditions remain intact, my um, material assignments uh, remain intact. Contacts are being detected freshly, and I can then go ahead and kick off the latest simulation as well. Good. So this is um, a design change. How? Um, Early in the design process, right, quick design concepts can be associatively imported and then tested based on the same simulation setup. Great. Now, in the interest of time, we cannot wait until this simulation is done because that takes around, I think, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, but for the sake of completeness, um, let's take a look at the already finished simulation uh, project to just get a you know look and feel for how such a thermal analysis post-processing would look like. So here we can see the temperature field once the simulation is completed. Again, as we would expect, cold coolant, in this case water, coming in here, uh, passing through the water jacket, leave, uh, um, exiting here. And we can see then the resulting temperature field around uh, the motor. As I'm used to, I could now inspect uh, all of the elements, etc. I can do further post-processing, can take a look at the um, flow field, of course, can animate it, um, etc. Now, we don't want to spend too much time on this. I think you get the idea, right? We ran first a CFD analysis only, and then a thermal analysis. I actually made a design change, ran the simulation setup for the new design as well without having to do any manual work. Now, the last two to three minutes before we wrap this up, all of this is also not just possible for um, thermal and flow analysis, but also, uh, you know, 
uh, structural analysis types. In this case, let's take a quick look at a frequency analysis. In the same manner, I'm bringing in the shaft and the rotor. So, you know, I'm preparing it at my CAD model and I'm bringing it in. And I can then do um, a frequency analysis. So, looking for the natural frequencies of the shaft and the rotor. We can see here on the left, I have different types of boundary conditions, in this case, bearing boundary conditions, and then the centrifugal force, etc. So the things you, you know, you, you would expect. And I can then, of course, step through the different modes and at which uh, frequencies they would appear, you know, as, you're, as you would expect it. Um, again, on the same platform. Lastly, the same the, the same approach for a static stress analysis, so the shaft under a torque load. Um, let's take a quick look as well. So in this case, again, I have the bearing boundary conditions, but in this case, I'm applying not, no, I'm not looking for frequencies, but I'm looking for um, a resulting stress for uh, based on the torque on the shaft. So we can see it here, and I could now see whether or not I have uh, enough of a safety factor to operate that shaft and that rotor uh, properly. All right, now, just to quickly sum up, going back to the slides, what we did see now in the last, what were that, like 15 minutes um, or so, we started with a, um, a conceptual CAT model. You can see there's not a lot of detail in there yet, so it's really sort of you know conceptual early, early phases. We ran um, an end-to-end -end pressure drop analysis. We set up together a thermal analysis and looked at some results. We saw that on the same, on the very same platform, um, I can run frequency analysis um, as well, and of course, a static stress analysis. So everything with this from you know the convenience of a browser window, without any local hardware, without any local software, completely collaborative. I can share all of this with my colleagues. Um, that's what we believe is required to make um, you know to simulate earlier, broader, more intensely within an organization, and by that help the organization to innovate faster. That's what ultimately SimSkill is about. Now. Um, to wrap all of this up um, for, for this specific model, the, the types of decisions an organization can now do earlier are, are for example, these, right? What we can see here is a synthesis of the thermal analysis um, we ran. We can see uh, in this chart, we're plotting the flow rate over the global maximum temperature in the model. And you did see how, um, how I could easily evaluate different designs. So that's the, the blue uh, curve or the blue line is the model with four passes uh, through the water jacket, then with six, and then with eight. And we can see how when I operate these different uh, models at different flow rates, how my maximum temperature behaves. And again, something like this, such a parametric study would take, you know, would serious engineering effort, maybe, you know, days of work, if you outsource it, even weeks, um, with a cloud-native application such as SimScale with a cloud-native simulation tool, you can run all of this simultaneously within a, you know, and, and get to this decision-making within a day, right? Um, and that's what we mean with, you know, innovate faster um, thanks to accessible simulation. Same, uh, similar story for the frequency analysis we've seen. This is a Campbell diagram, diagram uh, where we see the natural frequencies plotted over the rotating speed of the shaft. Um, again, this is also a typical um, diagram um, our customers would plot using SimScale. We can see the different modes, and then I can check whether or not my um, rotor operates in a safe condition when it comes to uh, when it comes to eigenfrequencies of the model. Again, to produce something like this using a traditional simulation environment would be a serious effort and would be you know take days to run all of those um, um, sequentially. With SimScale, thanks to the scalability of your cloud, you can do all of this simultaneously, be done with this in a, in a matter of hours, make such decisions within a day, not within weeks. And again, going back to innovate faster. Good. With that, we're unfortunately sort of running out of time today in, in, in this today's webinar, so the official part is over. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them um, afterwards, of course, after we wrap this now up. Um, if you're curious, if this you know, session sparked your curiosity, um, I would encourage you to try this out yourself. You can go to simskill.com, just create an account um, uh, for free, explore the tool yourself, um, learn it yourself, or directly reach out to us. Uh, my email address is in the webinar details, um, and we're happy to explore your use case um, and you know, have a conversation about whether or not that could be a tool that would be valuable for your organization.
again, thank you so much for uh, the attention and um, see you in one of the future webinars. Bye-bye.